Iowa Police, too, is in fact a simple standard office building in Brussels finished just last year. Standard offices, but also passive, which does make them a bit non-standard on a very standard, very unadventurous Brussels office market. One thing we'd like to make clear before even starting, this is going to be an architect's account. And even though we have learned enormously from all sorts of energy experts and passive house experts, probably the biggest upgrade since I left school, um, we do believe that energy consciousness is only part of what architects should be thinking about when they draw. Obviously, going passive doesn't get you out of anything and especially doesn't get you out of at least trying to be a good architect. That means that when we drew, I hope it is, we did think compact form, but we especially thought urban integration. We did think high performance facades, but we especially thought of what message that fancy passive skin was going to radiate how light and color would play on it, how the trees would reflect on it. We did think heat loss and thermal gain, but this is the clincher. We especially thought of what we could offer to those that would be living in and around our building. Architecture is not about thermal bridges. It's about generosity. So I hope this was our generous response to a competition brief received in 2005 calling for some kind of low energy building. We won, calling for some kind of environment friendly building. We won with a low energy building, but very quickly afterwards, my partner Marc Lacour and the engineers we were working with called Synergy, they proposed to go passive because they thought that was end 2005, beginning 2006. They thought that if we were lucky enough to land the commission for a biggish office building like this one, at least we should take time to rethink things. What should an office building in 2010 look like? And what should it look like in 2010 for it not to be obsolete in 2030? Going passive was part of the answer. So we never once looked back. The client looked into everything before saying yes. He asked for exact, precise information, financial and technical, about the risks he would be taking in going passive. We calculated that on an 11 million euro budget, we would need about 160 thousand extra euros in order to go passive, mostly for um, extra facade budget, roof insulation, or earth tube, for example. We also calculated that it would take only five years for annual consumption savings to pay back that extra cost. So the client, once he knew that, didn't look back either at all. We drew banking on simple principles that gave rise to predetermined options you see here on the left. We could have drawn 101 different buildings with these options you see here on the left. What we imagined as architects is what you see on the right, the building you see on the bottom. The results are floor plans, plans that look like standard office plans. You have your standard vertical and horizontal circulations, you have uh, stairwells, you have sanitary blocks, and you have um, meeting rooms, standard open space offices, individual offices, all very standard. If you look up close, you can see that something is cooking. For example, the south facade along the street is very opaque, 80% opaque. The north facade almost is opaque, about 60% opaque. Technical shafts along the facades. Normally on market level offices, the value of an office is determined in part at least by the number of windows that you get. Here, no corner windows for obvious thermal reasons. Also, if you look at really close, no fan coils around the, fac around the facades, no radiators. That is all net electrical carpet space. That is important for market level offices. The secret lies here in our very low tech section that we worked on a lot with um, Synergy Summer, everything is very classical. We lowered the blinds. That way we don't let the sun heat us up. We bring in cool air through our earth tube. <clears throat> I don't know if you have a, a pointer, for example. It doesn't matter. Well, you can see. The top slide, we bring in the cool air through our raised access floor. It comes in through air vents, um, one every two meters 70. The whole building is on a 90 centimeter grid. Every office gets three modules, so every office is 270 wide. So you have incoming air every two meters 70. It's pulled out through the air ducts along the um, corridors, the ceiling air ducts. 
during the night time, all the automatically opening windows, they open up, mechanical ve ventilation is turned up, and we evacuate the heat accumulated during the day. Night time, sorry, night time actually, we prepare what we use during the day on the top slide, and that's the slab cooling up here. So that slab, it got cooled off during the night here. When, no, sorry. That slab got, got cooled off here during the night here when we automatically opened the windows. In the winter time, we obviously bring those blinds up, let the heat from the sunlight warm us up, marking the end of tinted, sickly green, sickly bronze, sickly blue tinted glass. That is really important, that is extra transparent glass. So we have much more opaque surfaces, much less window surfaces, but very transparent glass. When we visit the building with people, they don't say, well, great architecture, they say great air quality, great daylight quality, that is important. That's about making people happy in your building. Um, air is pulled in through the earth tube, warmed up, and brought in through the raised access force, same principle, every two meters 70, and then pulled out. We obviously um, use heat gain um, because of the people, the machines, the light fixtures. Structurally, the building is just as simple. This is um, an ultra prefabricated concrete skeleton we are working a lot on for the moment on this project and on the next project I'll be explaining. This is because we are convinced that reuse is just as important from a sustainable point of view as energy consciousness. It's for a whole other talk, so I won't go into that now in order to have time for questions, but it's really something we are working on a lot, also in order to reach budget control. So when we went on site, we started mid-2008 and ended mid-2010. We were supposed to finish at 1,260 euros per meter. We finished at 1,309 euros per square meter. That is two months late and 3% over budget, which gets me to the main part of this talk, what went well and what went not so well on Eichel Buddies. The facades, that went really well. It's probably where we learned the most from a sustainable point of view. You have to really look up close, for example, here, to realize that those 90 centimeter frames, 90 wide, 350 high, 90 centimeter wide frames, this is prefabricated frame cladding. Frame cladding is not traditional facade cladding. You work with frames. Here they're 90 centimeters wide. In their basic all aluminum form, frames such as these are 12 times more airtight than the mandatory 0.6 value. So we were really convinced that this was the right technique. We had already built buildings with a facade cladder that worked with this kind of frame cladding. We had already tested buildings like that, even for high-rise buildings. So we were convinced that technique-wise, that was the right choice. But sustainable buildings, it's not only about energy efficiency, it's also about material choice. So all that aluminum bothered us. So we replaced the inner frames by wood. <coughs> Timber, I suppose you would say. Um, very quickly, we realized that that wood could be Belgian wood, zero transport. We could, for example, easily create grooves, you see here, in order to insert, you can see them there, simple and then double airtight barriers. We could even create other grooves here. I think here you can see the cabling in in order to put the cabling in to get to our automatically opening windows and blinds. We could use the whole backside for acoustic panels. We work with slab cooling, no suspended ceilings, acoustic problems, so everything that could be used um, for acoustic was Im acoustics was important. We had very little money, so every element that we drew, for example, facade elements, had to fill several different functions. So acoustic elements. All that wood could be um, wood could be lazured and not varnished. That means that all the wood inside serves as a humidity regulator. Um, again, energy conscious, consciousness is not the only thing we were thinking about. When you look up close, you can see the three different modules that we designed with: 90 centimeter wide fixed glazed module, 
90 centimeter wide, opaque element with the acoustic backing, glass exterior cladding. The client wanted an all glass building. We said, sure. When we started calculating, not, our, not on site yet, but after having tendered, we realized that we had about 110 degrees behind here. The problem was not letting that heat get into the building because the whole problem during the whole design stage was designing to keep the building cool, not to keep it warm. In order to get that temperature down, we had to introduce what you see here, perforated sun shields, which are in fact in recycled natural aluminum, usually those embossed and perforated um, metal elements are placed vertically, horizontally, sorry. We placed them vertically. It's a kind of um, air vents that you see on the side of Coke machines. We simply place them vertically. That way, light plays on the bump side, and when you see it from the cold side, you see black lines. And that is what gives the first image you saw at the beginning of the building with the trees reflecting on the building, and, and the holes, when you walk through one way in front of the building from one direction, you see black holes. In the other direction, you see white lines because of the reflections. That is what animates, animates the facades. We were very, not afraid, but terrified of the idea of, imagining, of, of imposing on this neighborhood a 71% opaque bunkerish lump. So everything that we could use to animate the facade, that was important. But this is a technical element that we used for architectural reasons. Other example, the opening windows, the 60 centimeter wide glazing elements are topped off with an opening window. You can see it here. That window opens outwards for obvious air tightness and water tightness reasons. If we would have left our blinds